Welcome to Zwift Live and welcome back to the Z Pro Tri June Invitational Series. And here we are. It's the final race in the series and the final chance for someone to shake up the GC. And what a final stage it is. None other than the Alp de Zwift. Our field of the best triathletes on the planet are about to take on the hardest climb in Zwift. And it's going to be explosive and brutal. Let's get ready to see some pain faces today. I'm Matt Lieto and joining me is ex-pro triathlete and Zwift expert, Sean Jefferson. How's it going, Sean? Hey, Matt. Great to be here today and really looking forward to seeing these athletes race up the Zwift, race up Alp the Zwift. Uh, first off, how excited are you to not be racing up the Alp yourself? I think I've done the Alp three times in the last week. A fourth would just probably kill me. <laughs> so what do you think about today's course? What... Uh, Who's going to, who's going to break away? Is it who can break away? Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a solo effort out there today. We might see a couple of quick attempts early on, but once they get to this Alp to Zwift, it's going to be every man and every woman for themselves all the way to the top with Watts per kilogram being the highest, uh, highest one today. And we'll take, we'll really decide the winner. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, obviously that sustained climb is going to be who can uh, afford to put that uh, high power out for the longest period of time. Well, first, we've got the men up. Um, but before we get into the action, they're actually out on course already. Let's take a look at what, down, what went down last week in the Innsbruck race. With one race left in the series, Lionel Sanders, James Kunima, and Mike Phillips lead the GC standings. And as the road heads for the sky, the question has to be, can anyone push Lionel? off the top spot. Yeah, Sean, some great racing last week. We yeah, I mean, currently we, we saw Lionel all, all race series going for those intermediate points, and that's really what's put him at the top of the GC standings. But the sprinters have really shown early, early on with James Cunema and Mike Phillips coming through really strong in races one through three. Today is going to be a totally different race. Look for Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, you know, someone like Aaron Royal and Ali Brownlee to really shake things up today on this long sustained climb. Yeah, speaking of this long climb, let's take a look at today's course and format and uh, see what's uh, in store for the riders this week, Sean. Yeah, so we're, we're in Watopia, Tour of Fire and Ice, uh, which finishes up the Alp. We've got a 28K race, 17 miles long, um, over 1,000 meters of climbing so that's all primarily done on the alp and it's going to be 21 hairpin turns all the way to the top 12 kilometers from the start of the alp up to the finish and it's an average grade of eight percent look things to look out for really here no intermediate sprint points no intermediate points at all it's really just who gets the top first with three places at the top earning extra bonus points first is another 10 points of 40 points for the total win second six points and then third, we'll get an extra two points across the finish line. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be a tough race for sure. A lot of climbing and, and for some people, a little longer lead in uh, than most of us, uh, at least that I do when I uh, just want to get up the Alp in training. So uh, the athletes are out on the lead in going into uh, the Alp as we speak. So we're going to join the race that is already uh, going. Sean, does it look like that group has split up a little bit already? does look like there's a couple of athletes that have might might have fallen back so this is the interesting point with um the race today we're not just going up the alp we've got a we've got a 10 mile lead in before we even get to the base of the alp with a little climb up the epic beginning part of the epic reverse kom so some athletes may have already been hit and it looks like two to three have been already are already off the back of this pack we've got most of the contenders still in there lionel sanders Braden curry ali brownlee up front but um We'll see if there's any more tactics. They've got a little bit of a climb here before they get to the actual climbing. So uh, we'll see if anyone's aggressive early on and tries to whittle the group down before we even get to the Alp. Yeah, no, there, as we see there, there's some athletes getting kind of spit out the back at the moment already. Uh, it does look like Matt Russell uh, has been dropped out of this main group. Uh, he's 27 seconds uh, back, and it does look like David McNamee is also back there with Jared Brown. Uh, so those those three athletes uh, have popped off the back. It looks like Mike Phillips had some trouble early, and he's uh, two and a half minutes back. So a bummer for someone so high in the GC uh, to be chasing this far in. But he's going to look to try to. It'll be 
interesting to see if anybody attacks on the little upslope leading up to the out. Try and get rid of the group. So 16 points to Phillips, 20 to Costas. So Phillips has to get first, and I have to get like seventh or something. Costas has to win, and I have to get like. Eleventh or something. Yeah, definitely a little bit different effort. Uh, a little bit longer than three and a half minutes they're going to have uh, today going up the Alps, Sean. For sure, it's. I mean, even they've probably already done a good three and a half minutes just on this first climb today. So they're going to have a good thirty-five plus minutes up the Alp. So a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Um, it's going to be great to see some of those picture-in-picture -picture videos of their pain face while they're hurting going up the Alp today. There you go, Sean. So we're almost, we're getting pretty close to the base of the Alp. Is there anything left uh, on this course? Uh, you said you've ridden it three times already this week. That's, that could, is there anything left that maybe somebody could throw an attack in or could uh, surprise some athletes or catch any athletes off guard? No, no. I mean, I think at this point on the uh, jungle loop, so, they are riding through dirt now. It is a little bit harder of an effort. The draft effect is a little less. The thin tires on the dirt don't don't work as well and don't roll as easy. So even though they're trying to draft in a pack, it still feels a little harder than it normally would be if you're on the road. And and they're so close to the Alp, I, I think it'd be a little bit of a last minute ditch effort just to get a couple, you know, five, 10, 15 second head start if anyone does want to make a move at this point. Yeah, that'd be a, a real big match to burn before uh, getting to the base of the Alp, which is certainly going to be the big uh, challenge for today. But looks like the group is all together, kind of settling in right now. I think uh, everybody's shaking those legs out, getting ready for uh, the uh, little jaunt up the Alp. And Sean, you know, everybody talks about their PRs, kind of what maybe what their Strava segment uh, time, their best time is up the Alp. We're looking at uh, Lionel Sanders uh, here on screen. Uh, he, you know, hinted to me that he, you know, he thinks, you know, 36, 37 minutes is, is probably about where they're going to be. The rumor is that he's done 38 in a training session with, uh, you know, while doing intervals. So what do you think is realistic and uh, does it actually matter the time or is it going to be, like you said, a tactics situation? I mean, for Lionel, the time doesn't really matter. He just wants to be first across the line. I think he's just got a good idea of what he's done previously and what he probably can hold going up this up this climb as you see we're just getting ready to start they'll come up around this turn they'll hit a hit the um base of the alp with the the flashing lights on the bottom and then it kind of kicks up really quickly this is a very hard climb uh eight and a half percent all the way to the top but a lot of the climbing is done at nine ten eleven percent grades yeah yeah for sure and it, so here we go we see them uh officially at the start of the climb and sean I feel like the first section always catches me off guard. Is that just because it's flat, or is this first section a little bit steeper uh, than some of the rest of the Alp? I think it's just so much. It's, it is, I mean, we get a lot of steep parts on the Alp, but the first section yeah. is just consistently steep. It's the way we see right now, 10%, and it doesn't really lighten up for a while. So, I mean, it's it's no surprise who's got, who's up front already between Kenny Vanderjeis and Allie Brownlee. I expect them to be aggressive at the start of this race. Um, it's really about settling in after the first five or eight minutes and then maintaining that high power and consistent power all the way to the top. But Brownlee, aggressive early. Yeah, I mean, I think Brownlee has a little bit something to prove. He hasn't maybe had the series that he was hoping for as far as getting those wins and being super far up in the GC standings uh, going into this last stage. So he's, he's trying to prove a point here. He's spreading it out. I mean, already the top 20 is separated by six seconds, Sean. So uh, no doubt Alistair is blowing this race apart. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is mostly a solo effort. It's great to have a rider next to you or if you be in a small group just to have that kind of carrot um, to continue to chase or really stick with. But 
really once they're at 10 percent grade on the alp there's there is no draft effect these guys are it's really just watt per watt and um we're gonna we're gonna see a very solo long lonely effort for a lot of these riders today yeah there you go we got uh vander Dreis, who is down for a long solo effort very slight build on Kenneth uh, Vanderdrys, and, and he's one that has a bunch of power in his legs as well. Uh, tall, lanky athlete that certainly is built to go uphill pretty well. So he's right on the heels of Alistair Brownlee with none other than Lionel Sanders sitting comfortably. And Sean, I, you know, I, I think I think Lionel, obviously, he wants to win this stage and he wants to kind of prove something to a certain extent. But I also think he's he's happy to sit on wheels for the first little bit. Yeah, I mean, he, he may just end up looking at Costas because he knows he's uh, at this point the next closest rider to him on the GC standings and make sure he's comfortable enough just following Costas's wheel doesn't get out too hard too aggressive he can let someone like Brownlee ride off the front because um, he really won't factor into the GC points but if he just watches Costas and rides accordingly uh, I mean that that seems like the most uh, prudent tactic today but we'll 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 see how Lionel goes you know he wants to win this one and he's going to be aggressive probably no matter what how long you think Bradley can keep this up for the more than that he likes putting others in pain this is a great shot as we see the group getting blown apart it looks like they're settling into two main groups here Sean with a uh, you know about three seconds separating to a second group that's got Ronnie Schulneck, Tim Don, Philip Graves, Tim Reed, and Tim Van Berkel in it with Joe Skipper uh, trying to get back up there. But this front group has Alistair Brownlee, Kenneth Vanderdrys, Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, Braden Curry, Jackson Laundrie, our surprise winner from last week, Johnny Brownlee. So uh, maybe a teammate there for uh, Alistair who's pushing the pace up front, or maybe he's working for his brother, who knows? Uh, and then Sepp Odin is the last in that group with uh, Ben Canute, Schumann, Hansen, and Troutman kind of caught in the middle trying to catch back up. Yeah, and we saw we saw Lionel doing a bunch of uh, KOM uh, attempts earlier this year on Mount Lemon in Tucson, Arizona, where he trains, and he had to do it two or three times because someone went over and took his KOM, and he just went back the next week and took it again. So he's He's definitely been doing some longer sustained uh, KOM attempts, and that's really the type of training and racing you're going to need for a ride like today's uh, today up the Alp. Yeah, no, great point, great point, Sean. And I think yeah, he definitely is one that loves that sustained effort. I think he 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 was saying in the interview that I did with him earlier this week that he was able to focus a little bit more on these short, hard efforts that he needed to try to get those sprint points uh, for the series. Uh, but certainly he's going to be able to kind of fall back on what his strength is, which those, uh, which are those long sustained efforts. So certainly, uh, certainly going to do well today. We see some power ups getting burnt uh, behind Alistair Brownlee and Sean. You know, let's talk about power ups for a second. How important? You know, we know power ups are extremely important for for the race in general for this this series. But on the Alp, how much effect are the power ups, and which power ups are the athletes going to want to grab? Yeah, I mean, the, the really the only one you want today is the featherweight. Um, even those double drafts are really not going to do anything once you're hitting, you know, percent grade to 14 percent. You're not you're not going at a fast enough speed to actually even use the draft effect. So it's it's really all about lightweight today, the featherweight and using those either when you need a little bit of rest, that 15 second just to sit in and try to recover. Or if you're launching an attack and really want to use that extra um, 9.5 kilograms off your weight to make a la to launch an attack or really get away from somebody and try to sustain it to the finish. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good point for sure. And I think, uh, yeah, everybody's going to be crossing their fingers uh, or, or praying for the feather weight anytime we get a new power up. But Sean, Alistair Brownlee is, <laughs> he's committed. He's at the front. He's not letting anybody else take a turn. And it's working it, right now. He actually it looks like they just shed Jackson Laundry, uh, and Johnny Brownlee actually is off the back too. So we've got a small group that's just Alistair, Lionel Sanders, Anthony Costas, and Kenneth Vandedrys, uh, and Braden Curry still in the front. You know, we sat down earlier this week with Anthony Costas and talk about uh, talk to him about his chances for this uh, race and kind of his tactics going into this final stage and his chances of upending Lionel Sanders.
I think first place he is his to lose because uh, I think we have a 20 points difference. So if I win, he has to finish uh, 10th or 11th. So I'm not sure that's going to happen. So my goal is mostly going to be to to get back on the podium. So I have to beat uh, uh, James Kunama and Mike Phillips. And uh, so yeah, and uh, have a difference between them and me. So <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Uh, take a few guys with me and <laughs> drop them and put them between me and Mike and Mike and James. Yeah. Yeah. So you heard it there from Anthony. He's going to be obviously he's not going to be stoked to, to hear others had maybe some bad luck, but those athletes that he needed to jump to get back into the podium, uh, they're already out of contention. So now he can focus on the athlete that he needs to beat uh, in this race to win the overall. And it is Lionel Sanders who has now gone around. Alistair Brownlee, Sean, and he's taking a poll, and now it's the three. I don't know that I necessarily expected Alistair Brownlee to be this far up. Maybe I just overlooked. I probably should have expected that. But we, we've got three men on a breakaway with three and a half seconds to Braden Curry and Kenneth Vandedrace. Yeah, I mean, Allie had a mechanical last week during the race and didn't contend, so he's a little further down the GC standings than we probably expected. Um, but I think if you know anything about the Brownleys and especially Alistair, he's phenomenally strong on the bike. When, when they had the ITU WTS race in Kitzbühel a couple of years ago, it was a mountaintop finish. Ali just smashed everybody up the climb and then just cruised away on the run to easily take the win. So not surprising that he, um, he gets to the base of this climb and is aggressive and can actually push it and be you know, up with Lionel and Costas. It's definitely to be expected. Yeah, and I'm looking at these watts right now, Sean, and it looks like Lionel Sanders, and he's getting a little bit of a gap. It looks like he's putting in some digs. Like, they're settled into these six watts per kilo, uh, five and a half, six watts per kilo, and then every once in a while you see Lionel Sanders jumping above six and a half, seven. You know, that could just be him getting out of the saddle around the corners up some steeper uh, little gradients, but he's definitely putting a little bit of hurt on those other two in his group i don't think alistair is necessarily content with riding this group of three all the way to the top no and this the, the hard part about the alp is all the switchbacks the hairpin turns you you know the percent grade will switch from eight nine ten percent down to two percent so you really got to be on top of the gears really prepared for those either you're getting out of the saddle to push or mostly inside on a trainer you're really just using the gears to try to estimate or calibrate where you need to push power and how you want to push it. So guessing the RPM is coming into a turn is, is a little tough and a little difficult here. So it could be just that, you know, Lionel has just put it onto a low gear and is really just grinding away even through the turns and making some of those gaps when the, when the incline drops. Well, it looks like he's able to do that better than everybody else, uh, or he's, he's finally uh, gotten that elastic to snap. And it does look, Sean, that uh, Lionel Sanders has been able to gap those chasers, but now it's a group of three. Uh, Braden Curry has gotten up to Anthony Costas and uh, Alistair Brownlee. So those three for the moment at least, although it seems like Braden Curry is kind of off and on that group of three as they try to react to Lionel Sanders. But right now, as the gradient uh, evens out a little bit, it looks like Alistair Brownlee has found a little bit of a second wind. He's now under two seconds down from three. Uh, so they are trying to get back to Lionel Sanders and not willing to give him this queen stage of our Z Pro Tri Invitational quite yet, Sean. Yeah, and that's it's a long way out still. We're we're only on coming up to turn 14, so we're still well over halfway to go up the Alp. Um, it's nice to have somebody to ride with, even if you're just constantly chasing, trying to keep pace and maintain pace. So you might just see Allie trying to get back up to Lionel, really try to grab onto the back of his wheel, and even if he's not getting a draft effect, just use it as motivation to stay close, stay in it, and really try to push across for the win today. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and they are uh, they are bridging up as we speak, but let's look a little bit further down on the other athletes that are around there. We've got Kenneth Vanderdrys is in fifth place right now, 19 seconds back. Ben Canute having a great race here on screen with Braden Curry, who's trying to bridge up to uh, Anthony Costas and Alistair Brownlee. And now we've got kind of our chase group there with Johnny Brownlee is in this group. This is a, actually a nice little group, Sean, that might be able to kind of work together, so to speak, uh, to be able to bring uh, some of those riders in front of them back. Ben Canute, for sure, having the best race 
uh, he's had so far in this series, sitting in sixth place. And, and this is, I think, the kind of effort that suits Ben really well. He's with Jackson Laundry, who's looking to try to find his way up into the podium today, as well as Seth Odin and Johnny Brownlee. So uh, do, do we think, Sean, obviously there's a tiny bit of advantage uh, you know, you still get a little bit of a draft, especially on these flatter sections. But is it is there a sense of camaraderie with these four athletes? Like, hey, let's work together. Will we see some messages if you're in game? These guys trying to hype each other up. I don't know if we'll see any messages, but uh, there's definitely I think there's some camaraderie. You get around, you get into a pack of four and it, it may even just be a mental thing of I don't want to lose this group. I don't want to lose this pack of four. I want to stay connected all the way to the top. And we see Ben here working really hard out of the saddle, pre still pressing. Nice, uh, nice work there, and um, really just trying to stay within this group of four he's with. It's, it is a strong pack, and a lot of these athletes will have a different strategy on how they go up the Alp. Maybe, you know, these guys weren't really concerned with the win. They want to just be as high as they can at the finish beyond the podium. Um, so Ben may not have taken that first uh, climb or, or first turn or two as hard as the uh, guys up front like Lionel, Alley, and um, Costas. Yeah, and I think I think that's a great point, Sean. It, it, and it would make sense for those athletes that necess that haven't necessarily been doing that great in the one to three minute really hard efforts that you've had to to go through uh, to get through the series well. That they wouldn't force themselves to do that at the beginning of this climb. And at, sorry, as we as we talk about that, it does look like Lionel Sanders uh, has been bridged back up to. So Alistair Brownlee and uh, Anthony Costas are on the wheel of Lionel Sanders. Let's see if Lionel Sanders, he gets, he's now in third position. Uh, see if they soften up a little bit. Maybe they rest and start looking over his shoulder, realizing that, yes, the, the goal is to get up the Alp theoretically as fast as possible, but the goal is to get there by yourself. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but I'm guessing these guys don't want to have to sprint at the end of the Alp. <laughs> no, and it, the Alp does flatten off just a little bit. Um, so there is, if there is a group together, there is a little bit of a sprint point, but it's it's mostly going to come down to who's got the most watts right to the top of the finish. I mean, the last part of this course is so hard, and um, you really don't have anything left anyway to do a, a real sprint in, in terms of uh, like we've seen the last couple of weeks. So this is a great shot of Braden Curry. Uh, bright and early, not so bright. That's a window out the back, not a... TV that's been turned off so it's uh, still real early in the morning there uh, for Braden Curry he's working hard he's hoping as he saw sometimes uh, your best uh, partner your best uh, you know you have some assistance when athletes in front of you bridge up and they kind of group together because you hope that they slow down and kind of settle in and look at each other so he right now is really hoping that the fact that Alistair Brownlee and Anthony Costas have bridged up to Lionel Sanders that they're going to soften the pace there for a little bit to give him enough time to get back to him as you see him absolutely cranking Sean getting in and out of the saddle absolutely pushing the pace so Braden Curry really trying to bridge back up he's not settling in at, as far as I can see he's not settling in necessarily to his own pace yet he's still trying to to chase back and is separating himself from Kenneth Vanderdrys who is in fifth position behind him and then Ben Canute has actually separated himself from that group that we were uh, watching and talking about a little bit earlier. So he now has 10 seconds on Johnny Brownlee, Jackson Laundry, and Seth Oden. Yeah, you saw Braden Curry working really hard there. Definitely looks like more of an effort to bridge across than to just kind of maintain yeah. his position. He is dangling kind of in no man's land between that first group and uh, Kenny Vanderjice, who's sitting behind him. And then, like you said, all the way back to Ben Canute. But all of those athletes, the top six athletes, are all within a minute of each other at this point. So um, it doesn't look like Braden's making much headway there. But uh, Alistair on the front really pushing the pace and uh, setting a nice tempo for Lionel and Costas. Yep, absolutely are. And here we go. We're, uh, we are cruising. And it looks like it's settled down a little bit. So here's a uh, you know, 5% gradient. Uh, out of three percent of that corner, Sean. So a little time for them to to settle in and group up again. Oh, but it does so look on, uh, like Anthony ahead. Costas is where he wants to be right now. I think uh, he'd be happy to know that he's with uh, the best riders in the field today with Alistair Brownlee. I think he might have hoped that Lionel Sanders woke up on the wrong side of the bed today and was about 15 places behind him so he could take the <laughs> overall. But that's not the case uh, here so far today. Lionel Sanders looks like he's on form. So. Anthony Costas has 
probably little to no hope of winning the overall uh, standings just because he needs to finish. I believe he even said that it was 10 spots ahead of Lionel uh, Sanders for him to be able to, to take on the win. But I think now he's going to try to make sure he gets the win on the stage and uh, will be happy enough with a second place in the uh, in the final standings if he, if he does that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's it's the best way to go today. Try to get the overall win on the Alp. Try to no. just beat Lionel on the day because uh, as long as Lionel continues to do what he's doing, he would have to drastically fall off to fall outside of the top 10 um, and lose the GC standings from Costa. So really good, uh, good efforts here, both Lionel and Costa knowing what they needed to do and uh, showing up on the day to actually do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, uh, easier said than done, and you have to show up, as you said, on the day and, and put down that big effort. And Alistair Brownlee, he really, really wants a stage here. I think he's an athlete that loves racing on Zwift and hasn't necessarily the had the best of, the of luck so far and maybe maybe yeah, not the best legs of every race. Um, and he's today it drink. looks like he has good luck and good legs at this point. Jackson Landry, our surprise Winner from last week leading this group that has uh, Sepp Odin and Johnny Brownlee in it with them. They're chasing Ben Canute. They're about 20 seconds behind. Surprise winner from last week. Uh, was super stoked to see him uh, have such a great result. He's going to move up a few amount of uh, spaces today, uh, spots today, maybe finishing on the podium depending on where Aaron Royal ends up finishing. But we sat down and talked to Jackson just about racing the series in general and kind of those other athletes that he's able to rub elbows with. Still hoping to come into the top five, so I'm gonna have to have a really good day on Alpha Swift, but um, definitely encouraging that I've gotten better each week. So uh, next week, I'm just hoping to get into the top five. I know there's some guys who are really, really strong on like the long climbs, and I've kind of gotten my best results on the sprints, so it's gonna be a bit of a different day for sure, but it's, I mean, it's awesome just to be in the top 10 and being racing with these crazy good athletes. There you go. It's been great to see Jackson uh, improve every week as it goes by. He's one that takes this racing very seriously and does his homework for sure and is stoked to be a part of it. And I did uh, chat to him last week. Like and he, he had a, a bit of a posse with him when he got his win last week in the room and it, where his, uh, his uh, Zwift setup was. And uh, it went wild, to say the least. So hopefully he's got some more support there. Maybe everybody holding the fan today because this stage is no doubt pretty brutal. So big news up front. As we He's were gone. away, Lionel Sanders and Power Anthony zero. Costas, kind of who we assumed uh, it would end up being, they are gone. side by side pushing the pace up the Alps, separating themselves Sweet from gosh. all of the other athletes. Yeah, and it looks like Lionel or Alistair has had a uh, dropout or something. It's, he's, he's at zero watts per kilogram, um, not moving, consistently following back, falling back and down this uh, leaderboard right now. So see if that can get fixed and he can get back in it and kind of maintain that top five position. But definitely um, interesting with Lionel um, going to the front now and really pushing the pace. Costa just settling in, uh, doing a good job uh, staying on his wheel. But yeah, super <laughs> bummed for Ali. That's, uh, he's down to fifth at this point. Ah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's brutal. That's heartbreaking for sure. So unfortunate for Alistair Brownlee. He's the one that kind of animated this race early and as soon as his watts get back online 6.0 so he's back and uh, no doubt he's going to try to find himself right back in the middle of the field uh, once he gets a stable uh, internet uh, that dropout as a, was a brutal one for for Alistair but he's still sitting in fifth position so Vanderdrice is now in fourth uh, they Brent Vanderdrice excuse me has linked up with Brayden Curry uh, so those two athletes are 36 seconds back now working together it. as it looks like on screen Lionel Sanders back. is trying to shake Anthony Costas. Yeah, and they're they're well over halfway now. It looks like they're into turn eight, so eight more hairpins before they go up to the final part of the uh, KOM banner. And there's a little daylight there. It gets a little softer on the grades here. You know, instead of seeing those 10, 12 percent, it even though we're seeing it right now, it will drop down to a little more consistently in the 6 to 8% range for the next couple. So if this is a spot where um, Lionel can really just lay down the power and really maintain that nice 
strong effort he's been doing, I think um, he could pull away here, and it seems like he is getting a little more distance, up to two and a half seconds to cost us. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it's cool looking at some of their data, their heart rate uh, separated by one beat uh, a minute, so they're both working pretty darn hard, but it does look like Anthony Costas is getting gap now, 3.2 seconds, so a fair bit of daylight uh, going between Lionel Sanders and Anthony Casas, and Lionel is going to be able to settle in. He'll probably keep pushing to make sure that elastic breaks, but once he gets at about five to ten seconds, I think he'll be able to kind of settle in and do his own effort. Um, and maybe I shouldn't use the word settle when we're talking over six <laughs> watts per kilo. So. Yeah, especially he doesn't look like he's settling. He's out of the saddle. He's pushing. <laughs> he's grunting. He's got the sweat going. He's really riding hard at 438 watts. Um, 6.3 watts per, set, per kilogram, and he's using the featherweight power up to even extend it more. So he's he's really pushing for the finish, and really this is his move to try to win um, up the Alp today and separate himself and cost this good for good. Yeah, no, he is uh, he's he's almost at about five seconds right now as he hits nine percent. Uh, he gets out of the saddle, pushing that six watts per kilo. Just again, they're now through turn eight coming up on turn seven, uh, so def not too much longer. I mean, it, it, see, for me, that's an eternity. For these guys, it's not going to be that long, Sean. But so they're 22 minutes in. It's going to be a, a pretty fast time up the out. Yeah, and some, some of these turns, are, uh, they're not all the same distance. So you get to a couple of them where, like, this turn seven is one of the longest in the last in the last uh, final few. So you've got a couple, like, long turns. Some of them are two and a half, two and a half minutes long. Well, the majority of the hairpins from seven up to the finish or in that one and a half to two minute mark. So Lionel really trying to maintain and push across this uh, turn seven and get up and really uh, extend the lead. And he's doing just that trying seven to and a half elastic. seconds to Costas. Yeah, keeps, uh, keeps spreading out that distance. We see Costas able to settle in now. Wow, Sanders over seven watts per kilo in this segment here. So now he's pushing over. That gap is going to start really opening up between him and Anthony Costas as he uh, pushes again over seven watts per kilo so it's 10 seconds now and the real question is going to be Anthony Costas doesn't really need to worry anymore he's not going to move any spaces uh, or spots further back in the GC if he loses some more uh, spaces in this finish today but uh, you know pride is one thing and I'm sure he's going to want to finish second behind Lionel Sanders that he needs to make sure that he doesn't go too deep into the well trying to stay with Lionel where he can't then just continue to uh, sustain a high effort on his own for the no. remainder because he's got about 50 seconds to kind of oh, guys chase it from behind. Yeah, he's, he's comfortably in second. Um, at this point, it doesn't look like he's oh. going to make a, a surge oh, back into so Lionel good. unless Lionel kind of cracks at some point, but I doubt that's Fucking happening. Race. He's been up this climb so many <sighs> times, and as we heard in his interview, he was really looking forward to winning this <laughs> stage and uh, taking the GC. So. It's it's right where he wants it. He's you know he's prepared for this and he knows the climb, so he's he's gonna push this. And I think he's gauging and um, tempering out his watts just enough so he can get to the top in first. Yep, there we go. And he he has 12 seconds now uh, on Anthony Costas, yeah. who is chasing hard, but I think has uh, yeah he's relented. I think he knows that he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be second place here today. He's not gonna be able to bridge back up. To Lionel Sanders, but uh, there we go. 12 seconds now separating those two athletes pushing, both pushing over six watts per kilo, mid 150 heart rate. Both those uh, athletes with Kenneth Vanderdrice chasing one minute behind the athlete, athletes that we see on screen. Lionel Sanders on the left and Anthony Casas on the right. Yeah, and uh, I think Lionel's probably looking at his, um, his fastest time up the Alp is whipped, and he's at this point he's saying to himself, well, I think I got away from Costas. Uh, Vander Dreis is still over a minute back. Now can I get my PR up the Alp? So he, he's probably looking at those splits and looking at those times and really going to chase that in the final four to five uh, hairpin turns up to the finish. Yeah, and he's doing so with a, a fair amount of watts, Sean. I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not uh, seeing 450 watts. Uh, at turn seven when I'm going up the Alp as well. Well, the, the nice thing about climbing up the Alp, um, if anyone's ever been up or climbed the Alp, is you get an average per hairpin turn. So there's 21 turns, you get 21 segments where it resets your average watts. So it gives you a nice um, goal every time. If you were, you know, for someone like Lionel, he's 
just looking at his power right now, he's probably looking to average 460, 450 watts for the last five segments. So he, see, he gets a reset every time and he can continue to chase those segments and average those watts all the way up to the top, even if nobody's around him. It gives him a personal, uh, personal goal to chase every time. There we go, as he hits turn number five, uh, he gets a reset on those watts. That's a great point, Sean. I know I always love looking at that. Keeps me motivated for sure. And uh, not that Lionel needs any more motivation. I'm sure he's got some good music going on there. And he is cranking. He's definitely looking. He's looking out of time, Sean. I think you're right. I think he's looking for that PR. And maybe he's looking yeah. to make sure he wins uh, by a big enough gap uh, to kind of put a stamp on it. Because I do think, you know, he's a smart racer. He knew going into the series when I talked to him that it was about those intermediate points for those first three races that were that was what was going to allow you to maybe win the GC, where I do think he still wants to win a stage, and if there's a stage that he could pick to win, it would be today's, and Kenneth Vanderdijk's doing a great job. He's going to have his best result of the series here for what an, ath an athlete that we kept referring to is kind of that most combative rider. Uh, Vanderdijk is holding, holding pretty strong, only a minute 20 back, Sean. Yeah, he's been consistent through the Z Pro Tri Series, especially as the aggressor. You know, he loves attacking. He showed um, on the uh, right, the Innsbruck right, course sir, when we we finished at the top of the KOM that he he made an attack very early and Costas just got him at the very end. So, you know, he can climb as well, and he's showing that again here today. Um, up into third, only a minute 23 behind Lionel. He's having a phenomenal race and consistently pushing over 440 watts. So very strong riding from Kenneth Vanderjice today and uh, great to see him have uh, have his day today and go finish on the podium, it looks like. Yeah, and he's got a minute if he wants to bring back Anthony Costas. I think that's gonna be a big call for as good of a climber as Anthony Costas is and it doesn't look like his watts are dropping too much at this point uh, as these athletes hit turn four. Uh, sorry, as Lionel Sanders hits, uh, comes up to turn four. Uh, they are still pushing the pace here. 10% on the left side for Lionel uh, and Kenneth Vanderdrys dips down into 7% gradient. So a little bit of uh, respite for him as he's chasing Anthony Costas, but still trying to hold off Braden Curry, who I think went pretty deep. So I don't see him pulling back Vanderdrys. He's now 16 seconds behind. Uh, uh, Braden Curry's gonna have to start worrying about Ben Canute, who's having a great ride today and he is now about 30 seconds behind Braden Curry, looking uh, to move up to fourth place in today's race. Yeah, and then if you look a little further down, Knut's kind of separated himself, like you said, but then we've got a pack of five riders all back around two minutes and 50 seconds down to three minutes back, and that's gonna complete your top 10 there, um, with Odin, Hansen, Troutman, Laundrie doing really well up the Alp today. He's gonna solidify his top 10 finish if he can continue this and maybe even move up to the top five with today's points. So really impressive from Laundry, um, who said he's just been getting better and better every week and uh, really showing it today on the Alp where we might not have expected him to be uh, as strong. So really coming into this race, uh, firing in all cylinders. Yeah, as far as expectations, it, this is exactly who I was gonna talk about, production reading my mind. Ronnie Schildneck, that guy, hats off. He, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he wins. He's he's repping the Masters division, as well as the uh, over 80, uh, 80 kilos division as well. Uh, I don't know that Ronnie would have thought he would move up in the GC on the final stage of Watopia, and I think he's gonna do that, Sean. I think he might move into the top five, and it's, again, it's not always watts per kilo. It's, uh, you know, maybe how many watts in general and how much you're willing to eat the pain, so to speak, and, and Ronnie is, is doing that today. Yeah. yeah, and we look to like the 70.3 or Ironman races to really do well up the Alp. It's all about 35 plus minutes of really high power, and those, those type of athletes are consistently doing reps in those 15, 20, 30 minute uh, zones. So definitely used to doing those long, sustained, high power reps, and you can see like Shieldnick really pushing real high power here, doing great, still in the top 10, holding that eighth position, and um, got a nice little group behind him, but uh, looking really strong right now. Well, Sean, we're gonna need somebody to do the math, but I think actually, I think Ronnie has been really looking at the points. I think Ronnie, if he pulls up Go. Jackson Landry, who's 11 seconds in front, those two athletes are only separated by two points. I, I, I think Ronnie could move into the podium today if he okay. 
finishes in front of Jackson Lambie and gets a gap in between those those two riders. That's yeah. That's uh, I don't have the points in front of me, and it's too hard and too uh, complicated for me to figure out. But he, he probably knows what he needs to do. They've looked at the GC results and uh, probably done all the calculations on where he needs to finish. And he's been eyeing someone like Landry, who's having a great race, and really um, at this point only 30 seconds up, so uh, or 20 seconds up, so closing the gap to, to Landry. Yes, yeah, so I mean, and Odin is in front of him as well, so he's going to have to get rid of Odin in that group, but uh, considering that Aaron Royal has had uh, not a great race uh, today in front of him and with the drops of Kinema and Phillips, uh, the podium is in contention for Ryan Shieldman, so that's why he's pushing that pace uh, so hard there, and uh, yes, that group has caught Jackson Landry, so you have Jackson Landry, Matt Trotman, Ronnie Shieldman, except Odin in there as well. Lionel Sanders at the front, gets out of the saddle, Oh, Sean, that came up pretty quick, man. They're riding so fast, they're almost a K from the finish. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy to see what Lionel's time is. Um, compare it to some of the other pro cyclists we've had go up the Alp. Um, last couple of months ago, we had Team Ineos ride up with Darren okay. Thomas, um, Chris Froome, Thomas and you. Bernal. Ah. So you can do a little bit of race to race comparison, see how Lionel stacks up. But he is out of the saddle and is smashing it to try to get to the finish as fast as possible and see if he can crack himself with a new, uh, reward himself with a new PR today. Oh, this is brutal. He's absolutely going for it. No doubt he's looking at the clock, Sean. I had my uh, handy little stopwatch go when they hit the climb and he's coming up on my watch to about 33 minutes so far. So with 850 meters to go, he's certainly gonna go faster than his PR. Uh, whether or not he goes faster than those Team Ineos athletes, that's another question, but certainly that'll be um, some pride for Lionel if he's able to do that but uh, to me this is this is awesome because you, you always you want a race like this in a series to highlight the best overall athlete but you want to also allow that overall athlete to show just how dominant they are and the fact that he went after those points meant he was a tactician if he wanted to he could have tried to win all those races but it wouldn't have been the best thing uh, to be able or if he was trying to win the series overall as he adjusts himself going into the final 500 meters but it's awesome to be able to see lionel ride every one of these amazing athletes off of his wheel coming into the top of the album. Yeah, and you see there, Lionel is getting frustrated. He's looking at his heart rate numbers, and it said 97 beats per minute. So he's made a couple adjustments. It's back up to 159 beats per minute, which is relatively high for Lionel Sanders. We typically see him in the 140s, 150s, but uh, he's going all out today, really gunning for the finish line to this point. 525 watts, crushing it out of the saddle, and really shooting for not just the win, but his best time ever up the Alps. Yeah, he certainly is. I think right now he's looking for a sub 35. I think maybe that's uh, kind of the carrot that he's looking at. 11%, 470 watts, 500 watts now for Lionel Sanders. Uh, it is definitely uh, worth uh, having the screen purely on Lionel for the finish of this race as he absolutely crushes himself. Known to be an athlete that has an incredibly low heart rate when he's going hard. To see him at 165 means he's absolutely killing himself. 100 meters to go. Lionel Sanders is barely going to get under 35 minutes, I believe. Look at him kill himself. If you don't think this athlete wants to get everything out of himself every time he races, uh, you are, you're you just plain wrong. And here we go. Under the finish banner, we're going to have Lionel Sanders taking the queen stage. <laughs> Look at the pain on Lionel's face. Uh, he wins up the Alp and absolutely solidifies the fact that he is going to crush the field in this uh, Invitational Series. Uh, this is the only race that he's won, but he's going to have a huge gap on points. As we see Anthony Costas riding in alone, uh, he's going to be about a minute, maybe a little bit over a minute behind Lionel yeah. Sanders, and he is certainly going to be stoked to see that finish line there. Let's get those GC standings. Yeah. Up, um, we know we know Lionel yeah. easily took the win today with 145 points, and here's the final series standings. Anthony oh. Costas moves up to second. Mike Phillips, who had a mechanical at the beginning, stuck with it, drug himself up to the top 20 to maintain his third oh. spot uh, place in the GC standings. Jackson Laundry moving into the top five at fourth spot. So really incredible performance from Jackson Laundry. Did a 
got better each week and really had a great race up the Alp when he wasn't really expecting to, to perform that, that high there. Uh, Sepp Odin, a little bit of a surprise there, a name we're not too familiar with um, in the, in, compared to some of these other ones like Aaron Royal, but amazing performance from Sepp Odin. Uh, really powerful, really consistent all race. Um, and look how close it was from 5 through 10, uh, 96 points, 95 all the way down to 90 points at Braden Curry sitting in 10. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. As, uh, as expected, extremely painful, lots of attacking, uh, a little disappointed. Kunama, I heard James Kunama had a internet problem coming into the race, and I'm assuming Mike Phillips also had an internet problem coming into the race, so that, that was second and third uh, leading into this race, and neither of them even started, so that was really disappointing. Uh, but I, I figured Costas would be kind of the guy who we'd be going up against. But I did admittedly forget about Brownlee. He hasn't played too big of a role, I'm assuming, because it was not continuous power output in the previous races. But then once you make it into a continuous big power output, uh, Brownlee was a huge aggressor. And so as the race went, started off very relaxed, and then basically a big attack when we go, when we started, there's like a little, it's called uh, Epic KOM Reverse. And you go up this, but then you make a right turn and you go to the jungle and then through the jungle and then up to the Alp de Zwift. And it's quite steep that first part and there was very big attack there. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be horrible if this is the way the rest of the race goes. But I think it was it was probably nervousness and a bit of insecurity with the actual continuous power output required to do well up the Alp. And so I think guys were trying to shed people, get them get them uh, while they're not paying attention. And so anyways, we did shed a couple of guys, but for the most part, we started to climb all together. And very quickly, you saw that it was going to be, you know, five or six guy race on once, uh, once it got steep. And I was a bit surprised that Brownlee was the major aggressor. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but um, but that's how it was. And so uh, I was, for the most part, for the first 10 minutes or so, just sucking wheel, trying to survive. I think it was like 400 and, well, I have it right here, actually. I was 438 watts for the first 10 minutes. Um, and so I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, if he holds this the entire way, there's absolutely no way I will keep up. But uh, he started to relax a bit, and then Costas pushed the pace, and then I pushed the pace. And then we just kind of went back and forth for another 10 minutes or so. My 20-minute power was 429 watts. Uh, and then I think, unfortunately, Brownlee either decided to have a quick smoke break or something, or he had a power drop because he got off the bike for about 20 seconds. And, uh, and so anyways... Unfortunately, that's the that's the <clears throat> the part of e-racing is sometimes the old internet don't work. So you got to invest in that that high-end internet. I got the best internet here, horrible upload speed, but good download speed. Um, but anyways, so then it was just me and Costas, and to be honest with you, I've been battling with him for like the last like I don't know eight to ten weeks, and I think I've only beat him once, and he's beat me a handful of times, and so you know it was really, it was really motivating to to want to put him under pressure and to finally get a, a you know a solid win. And it just, uh, I mean, I I was just enjoying it. I, I mean, I haven't raced, I haven't experienced like true race hardship and pain, the good pain that you just love keeps you coming back for more. I haven't experienced that since Daytona in December. And so what is that, like seven months ago now? Uh, and so as much as it hurt, and it and it did really hurt, I, I heart rate wise, I mean, heart rate's crap because sometimes my heart rate screws up. And so like all my peaks on training peaks are all incorrect. Like, cause my heart rate never goes to 180, but for 2020, um, that's my highest all across the board. Uh, five second, one minute, five minute, 10 minute, and 20 minute heart rates, 100 and 153 for 20 minutes, which for me is is uh, like sub 15 minute 5K pace if I was running. Um, and so so it just felt fantastic to, to get out there and race hard like that. 
And so I'm very grateful to Zwift for giving us this opportunity to race against each other in a you know very competitive setting with a lot of the top uh, bikers anyway in sport. And um, it certainly has filled the racing void for us, I think. And so um, in terms of just to give you the, the, <clears throat> the total power up the climb, uh, I lapped it. Now keep in mind, this is my power meter data and the kicker is what, by the rules, the kicker is what you have to pro plug into Zwift. So my, my data might be a little bit lower on Zwift, but anyways, according to my power meter, I averaged 426 watts for 35 minutes at an average heart rate of 150. And I had a little heart rate drop out there too, so that, that would have been a bit higher. But anyways, that's gotta be, I don't, Training Peaks doesn't measure 30 and 40 minute power. It only measures 5, 10, 20, and 60. But I would have to say that's probably my highest 35 minute power or like 30 to 40 minute power that I've ever done. So really happy with it. I know, as I said, I don't know if the interview will make it to pre-interview, but I, I hurt my knee last night. And uh, I think it was, I wasn't super worried about it because I figured I just kind of pinched the nerve running down the inside of my knee. Strange, because it was just a sharp pain and I moved my knee in a particular way on the outside. And so fortunately, if this was a running race, I probably wouldn't have been able to start the race, but because it was biking and it didn't bear any much load, like pounding, um, I was able to still perform well. So. So that was really fun and grateful for that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's that that's the series. It was really cool, four-part series. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Thanks for to everyone for, for tuning in and following along. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Watopia sometime soon.